Happy Valentine's Day. Yep, knew that was coming. Look at Charlie's little Valentine's present. Hold on. I got her some little flowers. Hey, hey. Okay, happy Valentine's Day, everybody, from me and Charlie to all of you guys. We are cordially, 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 cordially. Yep, go ahead and chew that right up in the mic. Go ahead and chew it. We are cordially inviting all of you guys to be our Valentines. Do you accept? Yes or no? Check the box. Yes or no? If you guys want to be our Valentine. Welcome to today's video. I wanted to do a little Valentine's treat whilst working on other videos for this month to kind of just lift up you guys on Valentine's Day or just have something for you guys to watch on Valentine's Day. I hope all of you are doing well. I thought it'd be cute and a little festive for Valentine's Day. So that's what this reading vlog is. I hope you guys enjoy. I read four different books for today's reading vlog. Wanted to read five, but you know, life gets in the way. So that is what this day's reading vlog is about. I hope you guys are going to enjoy the video and I will see you guys at the end. This was an extremely difficult decision for me to make personally for what the first book of this video is. But I did choose the do-over by Lynn Painter because I absolutely adored Better Than The Movies and I love the premise of this and since this reading vlog is out on Valentine's Day and we're doing a cute little romance vibe for Valentine's Day, I thought it would be perfect to kick off this book with literally a book that is about and takes place on Valentine's Day. It's not even 300 pages so I feel like we can get through this definitely by tonight and maybe even start another book. So you guys know the first thing that I do with hardcovers. is one of these. Always, always, always have to take off the cover. Oh my gosh, wait, I, yellow has always been one of my favorite colors. Let's start the Duo of Redland Painter. of me in this corner because obviously since this video is valentine's themed wear whatever also i got these flowers for mila for valentine's day and then i gave we gave her her valentine's present today and she she was like oh i love them and we were like oh do you want to take them home and she was like no they can stay here so i just put them on my freaking book cart and i think it looks so cute over here i've taken 5,000 pictures i am currently on page 155 of the do over i'm on confession number 12 so i think that's like chapter 12 i don't know here are my thoughts thus far it's hard to feel like a connection for the love interest of this book because i feel like it's been focusing so much on the whole entire like groundhog's day meets valentine's day which i know is the plot i'm definitely going to say that i like better than the movies like 10 times more than this book and it's not that i'm not liking this book because i am enjoying this book i think that lynn painter has a way of writing her books to feel so much like a teenage rom-com you know like i always said better than the movies felt like reading the duff and i feel like like that same vibe of like those rom com but like teenager centered rom-coms are definitely what i feel like she does best and i do love that vibe of her books with this one though i feel like the difference between better than the movies and the do-over is that you got a lot more connected with the characters in better than the movies because you were just kind of following a plot with this one i think it's always hard when authors do the whole entire like groundhog's day thing because for example i read christina lauren's in a holidays 
um, right around Christmas time, which is basically this premise, but with Christmas instead of Valentine's Day. I will say that I'm liking this book better than In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, but when authors do that, you're focusing so much on like the day in, day out plot that while you are learning things about the character, for example, you are learning things about the guy in this book, but like there's no progression in their relationship because you know she's reliving the day so she remembers all of these things about him but like he doesn't know anything about her and like doesn't remember all of these things that they've done so it's a little hard to like really really root for them even though i really like the guy it's hard to like root for them in a relationship and also you're not learning a ton about him like we are we have this much left in the book not much at all like probably a little bit over 100 pages left and we just started learning like snippets of information about the guy this whole entire book so far has been just kind of like a repeat 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 i will say i do think that obviously this has to be done for the plot like you're not going to just like repeat the day two times and then it's like over but i will say that i do think that lynn painter is doing a good job because she doesn't kind of follow the same exact storyline like you're living the same thing every single day she does try to like switch it up or just kind of like skim over the parts that happened which i appreciate because i'm like okay listen i know it's like a groundhog's day thing but like we get it we get it can we just like move on if you guys didn't read this during valentine's day because obviously happy valentine's day i already said this but you know when i'm posting it it's on valentine's day but i think that this is a perfect valentine's day read for what i am you know reading of it so far over the whole entire like boyfriend cheating plot line i don't know that's just my thoughts why I'm sweating. So, I just finished the do-over. We finished the first book for today's video and I will say that I'm like trying to think. I will say that I think I'm gonna rate this a four stars but I'm rating it a four stars because I think it is a cute book for what I feel like it is kind of written for like not what it's written for but like obviously i don't know it i think that it is a very cute book to read if you're wanting a cute rom commy book i think that this is a super cute book to read especially i feel like it was a perfect book to read for around this time for valentine's day and i really liked the ending of the book i guess one of my biggest complaints couldn't come up with the word my biggest complaint about this is that i just i don't know I feel like the way because you guys know like there's always the day that you live through and then like it continues on so like with the groundhog day thing it's like you live every single day over and over again but then there's finally a day that that breaks off i could tell where this was going whenever it was going to that storyline and i guess i liked the storyline because you got more of like the two people together but then again it was like one day and there was this trope that happened with this that always gives me the ick. It always gives me the ick when this happens. So, like, I literally was like, ugh. And then, kind of, things kind of take, like, a weird roll. Like, everything starts going fast because then, you know, like, she wakes up the next day and it's no longer Valentine's Day. And then, basically, all of the things that she has done on Valentine's Day comes back to bite her, you know, because some things happened on Valentine's Day because she thought she was just gonna live them over again, whatever. And I didn't like that at all. Like, I don't know, the book ends off on a good note, but also it was kind of like a weird timing for me. Stuff with the ex-boyfriend, like, I don't know, just stuff like that. I feel like that's kind of what brought it down to a four stars for me because I feel like everything else was super cute and I really liked it. I think it is an adorable book. And I really recommend you guys to read it. I think Lynn, I really, really like Lynn Painter's writing. Also, she just did the cover reveal for her new release that's coming out, I think, at the, towards the end of 2023. And I cannot wait for that book i think it's a enemies to lovers fake dating i think i don't know that could be me just like making that up but i'm very excited for that one so this is the first book let's choose what our second book is going to be which i've already subconsciously chosen and that is highly suspicious and unfairly cute by talia hibbert because this is kind of a bit of a shorter read also talia hibbert i have read 
the third book in the Give a Life Color Brown and I didn't read the other two books but I did enjoy that book. I liked the writing and I liked the like plot line of that book. So this one is a friends to enemies to lovers which I think is a really good like little trope that we have going on and it's I think that they like are camping and so I'm expecting a lot of banter, especially when you used to be friends with somebody and now you guys are enemies, but there's like something there. And I'm expecting this to be unfairly cute. So let's start highly suspicious and unfairly cute by Tolly Hibber. It is the next morning. Oh, I am currently on chapter nine of Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute, but that means that I am on page 159. I would say I'm about halfway through. I feel like that's literally like halfway. Here are my thoughts thus far. I do think that this is a very cute, I think it's a very cute book. I love the guy and the girl respectively. I feel like I love the guy in this book. I feel like even though it can be annoying their whole entire like why they're not friends thing it's like typical miscommunication but for me i feel like it is one of the more very extremely realistic forms especially in teenagers and high school of like miscommunication in friendships of why people grow apart because of miscommunication very realistic even though it can be extremely annoying because when you find out like why they're not friends anymore which i feel like you find out extremely quickly like it's it's kind of like a known thing like why they aren't friends you don't really have to like go and figure it out and it's just kind of like living with that miscommunication between the two of them but i feel like it's very just super high school and this is a ya book so it's like yeah and i guess what i also appreciate is that i feel like it does depict high school even though like you don't see like it it just kind of depicts high school relationships and high school friendships in a very realistic manner sometimes when i read ya books from authors and they're depicting high school i'm like this is not how high school was at all or at least it wasn't for me i also love the banter between them the girl in this book is very smart she's very witty she's so unapologetically herself which i absolutely adore i love the banter with every single character in this book especially from the girl she just has top tier like comebacks and i really like that i also there's been a few moments in this book where i've been like wow i really love the writing i love the way that they like certain things have been written like they use like metaphors and things like that the chapters are extremely long they're extremely long and i just don't like long chapters that's not really like a critique that's just me kind of being like i don't like long chapters there's nothing against miss talia hibbert i have been reading this with a british accent because at the beginning of the book she writes how she writes like a whole entire glossary on like all the little like sayings that are in this book or like all of the different things that she says and like what they mean because it's written like they're in the uk and also the dedication of this book is adorable it says for sam my very own high school sweetheart it's so cute i'm having a very good time with this book i'm gonna try to finish this before my nail appointment this morning and i'm having a good time at bk habit your life i finished highly suspicious and unfairly cute i do think that this book is unfairly cute because wow i think that the banter between the two i think the relationship between the two characters like i feel like it is just such a innocence too and it's so cute and you kind of like take that for what it is i feel like it is very cheesy in some ways and very cute but i love that you know it's valentine's time also i i've said it but i just love the guy 
from this book he is so sweet and like genuinely cares and his internal monologue is just so funny and it's very relatable in very many ways and i loved the main girl too i loved the ending that was made for these two characters i think that this was absolutely adorable and it was just such i had such a good time reading this book it was cute so if you guys want a cute fast read this book is literally not even 300 pages it is very cute if you're winning that vibe, I would definitely recommend this one. We're gonna rate this one a three stars, but a high three because it's very cute, but I don't think that it will be extremely memorable for me, but I think that it is a very cute read. On to the next, on to the next. Let's go pick out the next book. Sorry, I know the British accent annoys some people, so I try not to do it as often, but you know. Okay, so what I think our next two books are going to be is definitely these two books so these are by the same author they're a part of a little like series because i'm pretty sure both of the guys in this in these books are firefighters so what i'm assuming is that they both like work at the same place so you'll probably see a little snippet of them in this book because this is the first book this is the second book first book we have is set on you by amy lee which i'm very excited to read i've actually wanted to read this book for like a long time now how long is this book this book is a little bit over 300 pages it is a book that takes place at the gym it is a gym influencer a fitness influencer let's see i'm excited i'm also just so excited for this one tell me this just doesn't scream valentine's day to you also i am going to be getting my nails done here in a little bit and i'm getting valentine's nails even though it's valentine's day literally in two days and i'm getting valentine's nails Two days before Valentine's Day, yes, but at the same time, I'm keeping up all my Valentine stuff because I just love Valentine's decor. this vlog i don't know and i don't remember but i am about halfway through set on you right now and i have to say that it's a super cute book i really like the banter and like the dynamic between the two characters i literally looked this up on goodreads i think yeah goodreads is what i looked it up on and i think this is literally called the influencer series the whole entire like influencer trope that some authors are like trying to write into their books now kind of is one of my biggest book icks because i don't know like if if it's not something that feels like realistic it's, it's a very niche thing to do, so if it's not done correctly, it, it just aches me out. I don't know, it just aches me out. So I think that's the thing that I'm having the hardest time with, but I will say I like the little like posts you get between like every so chapters of like posts that she's making and comments. I will say that I do think that Amy is doing a good job with it. Like I'm not getting an ick because being an influencer is like a huge thing. Like all of her friends are influencers, like her sister. And I just found out that the book X's and O's is about her sister because she's talking about her sister and she's like, she's a bookstagrammer. <laughs> Same. I think the guy is pretty great. Um, I was confused for a second, like some of the storylines, because I didn't really read the back of the book. I just kind of like knew what this book was about vaguely. But also it's so funny because I go to the gym every day. It is so funny and cute to read a book literally centered around like a fitness influencer and centered around the gym and like things that get on my nerves that she's talking about that like happens in the gym. I'm like, oh, we love a relatable queen. <sighs> Hello from the outside. I'm on page 222, angel numbers. In between chapters, you get like these little things where it's like little posts like from her Instagram. I think it's all Instagram based. I don't think any of it's TikTok based. Thank God. Oh God, I just hate talking about TikTok in books. And it does these little posts. And I actually really like the little posts because all of them are super meaningful. Like the author puts in meaningful messages behind the post as well as the main girl being like a very positive person. And I feel like it's a very like, I like it. I don't no, I like it. Usually this is like I said earlier. This is kind of just like a continuation of what I was saying earlier. Usually like being an influencer and stuff is a big ick in books, but I actually really like the way that this is written and I really like the guy in this book. I just finished Set on You. This book is literally 
adorable it's adorable i absolutely loved it i had such a good time reading this book i'm rating this book a four stars like going into this i was like yeah it's probably gonna be like a cute little rom-com i'm probably gonna rate it three stars like it's probably not gonna be anything other than that i think that this book is not only like i have already prefaced so adorable i love the couple in this book i love the girl i love the guy this book has so 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 many important messages it revolves around the gym and a fitness influencer and just all of her posts like i said earlier are super encouraging and they're actually really good messages that you can apply to every single day of life and i just had such a fun time reading it like the way that it's written is very easy to get through and also just the characters are written really well i love the friendships in this book and everything because obviously we are going to be reading about like the other ones because i know that x's and o's is about crystal sister so that's this is the next book that we're reading and this one's about Crystal's sister. And there's also her friend Mel that's in this book that's also like an influencer that I know we're probably going to get a book on. So I'm excited. I really loved this book. And now I'm really excited because this was one of my most anticipated releases for 2023. And I'm so excited because... Wait, is this... Yeah, Trevor. I was about to say, he was in like a snippet and I thought that he was going to be a love interest in this book. But she is a bookstagrammer and basically Trevor is going to help her go through a list of her exes. Like she's trying to get her second chance romance. And since we already meet Tara in Set on You, I'm very excited to read her book. So this is the next book that we're reading. I'm very interested to see an author write about like book influencers because I've never read a book about a book influencer obviously we read about like different types of influencers i've never read a book about a gym influencer like a fitness influencer and this was done very well so i have some high hopes for this one hi how's everyone doing i am doing great because I just finished X's and O's. I will say I'm very surprised because I thought that I was going to like this book a lot more than I liked Set On You because since she is like a book influencer, obviously that resonates with me a lot more than anything else does. I thought I was gonna like this one. I will say I'm rating this a three and a half stars. I still had an amazing time reading this book. I think it's absolutely adorable. I really like the main girl and I love the bookish talk and this book did the same exact thing that Set On You did where it's like every few chapters you kind of get like a little post from her and everything like that and the character does relate a lot of things back to books which I feel like like books and book tropes which I feel like is very fun and cute and I really liked that. I will say it was a little much for me at times while it was kind of like a double-edged is it sword? <laughs> So it's sword or knife, I can't remember. But it's kind of a double-edged dagger. Okay, Destiny, you didn't say... Ugh. Anyway, it was... I liked it, but at the same time, sometimes it was a little much. Like, one time... Is this... Uh, one time there's an argument, and the main girl literally starts bringing up, like, book tropes in the argument, and I was like, okay. That's doing a little bit too much, girl. Like, I love books just as much as the next person i would never be in an argument and be like you know what i want my enemies to lovers trope or like playboy trope like no oh my god i just got so scared because like i felt like something on my feet and it was like fuzzy and i was like because charlie's lying next to me and it's literally my chair okay anyway also i liked the girl but sometimes i don't know like uh, i wasn't fully like 100% vibing with the girl I still really liked it I had a fun time reading it so she gets a three and a half I'm very conflicted on whether or not I want to start another book because it is 8 46 right now and I don't know if I want to start another book for this video I don't know Hello everybody, welcome back. Did you guys like today's video? But that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little cute reading vlog that I wanted to put together for you guys for Valentine's Day. Again, I hope you guys have an amazing Valentine's Day. I love all of you guys. You guys are all my Valentines. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Eat some chocolates, get you guys a Chick-fil-A heart tray, and have an amazing day. And I will see you guys when I see ya. Peace from me and Charlie. Look, put your paw up, ready? Peace. <laughs>